Hey guys, so before I jump into this video about the fan, uh, just know that the stuff I'm doing on this bike, a lot of it is just do, you know, or based on my own research and trying to find information out about the components I'm using, trying to build up a combination. So some of it is not proven and I'm going down the path to try to make it proven or try to do the research or try to help out the community like you guys. So <clears throat> as an example, this fan, I haven't seen anybody else use it and the amp draw on it is a, is a little higher than what I would want, but I want to try to use it in combination with another potential uh, controller unit to switch it on and off. So um, just take that into consideration, you know, don't just, I wouldn't just uh, go and try to buy all the parts that I buy and source everything and do everything just like I do because, you know, you might have problems if you don't do enough research about it, if you don't go the extra mile or if I make a mistake and, you know, I give bad advice, you know, that's always a possibility. So anyway, um, Keep it in mind, and then again with this fan, it may not be something I end up using, but I like the idea of it, I like the size, and I like how much airflow it has, so I want to try it. And I'll be the guinea pig for that one. Um, use me as an example or whatever, you know, I definitely do things wrong sometimes, but you know, we might get this one right, but it also might be wrong. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so one of the upgrades on this bike is going to be a newer electric fan. Now, as I covered in the uh, in episode 3 of this build series with the engine swap, the GL650 bikes, they come with an electric fan stock, but, you know, it's an old just plastic four blader, you know, it's a decent size, but it's utilizing an older, an older motor to spin it, and uh, I just want to go ahead and upgrade it. So what I'd seen online as far as upgrades for like CX 500s and, and possibly like GL 500 and stuff, typically was either like a Ducati fan or a Kawasaki ZX 6R. Well, I ordered a Ducati fan from eBay and um, it's a good piece, but let me show you what, uh, what we're dealing with here. All right, so we're looking at the fan and this would usually work in tandem on a Ducati radiator that had like a curve to it. So they can only be such uh, such a large diameter. Now, the ZX6R fan I've been seeing is approximately this size from what I can tell. Um, and I guess people have been using it no problem. But if I'm going to go ahead and go this far, I want something that's going to cover more of that shroud. So this is the CX500 shroud, or the GL, I'm sorry, the GL650 shroud. And uh, the CX500 radiator. I'm going to try to combine the two, but anyway, if you look at the shroud here, I've got right at eight and a half inches. Now, I did find a fan online earlier that I went ahead and ordered. Um, came from a Suzuki GS uh, or GSF 1250, so a Bandit 1250, like an 07. And what I had been seeing was that the radiator was uh, about seven and a half inches in height. And the fan covered that entire span. So where this fan is only, what, five and a half inches, five and a quarter at the most, this one's going to add all, like two inches to that. So that's going to give me almost an entire coverage of the radiator, which I'll just feel more comfortable with. So I'm going to end up wiring that on a thermo switch and we'll monitor it. We'll have the uh, COSO digital gauge. We'll actually be able to see what temperature we're running. So we'll, we'll have full control. We'll know exactly what's going on. But as I, as I move forward with this, as I, as I get the next part in, I'll show you everything I'm working on. Um, so we'll come back in the video whenever, uh, whenever I have those parts. Okay, so I'm back on it with the fan project. Remember, we are converting to an electric fan, either if you're using a CX or if we're doing a GL, we're just retrofitting a different electric fan on here, a more modern one. So ours is kind of a combination of, of the two since we're using a GL engine in a CX frame. So it's a unique combination, but still some of these aspects will definitely apply. Anyway, I got my new fan in, and like I mentioned, it's from a Bandit 1250. It's a 2007 model. So right off the bat, you can see a big size difference here. This is the Bandit fan. 
This is a Ducati 848 fan. And from what I can tell, this one looked really similar to, uh, say, like a ZX6R fan. Um, ZX6R might be a little bit bigger, but I don't have one in front of me. But that's just based off of video screenshots with, like, your hand compared to the size. Anyway, here's the issue I'm having. This is a CX500 radiator. That is not sufficient. I do not like how small that fan is. And maybe it is enough to cool it, but I still I feel like that's wasted real estate. So what I looked at was a lot of photos of different fans and different radiator setups. And from what I could tell, a GSF 1250 or a Bandit 1250 radiator was uh, a specific diameter or a specific distance top to bottom. And then this fan extended from top to bottom. So I just relayed that uh, that measurement and kind of rolled the dice and ordered one up. So, if you want, look at that. That is much better. So, it'd probably help if I actually film some of this stuff that I'm doing in here. But anyway, still on the uh, the fan conversion here. Got the radiator off and I'm just kind of mocking things up, checking clearances and whatnot. And I do have plenty of room for this fan actually. So I've gone ahead and I've started disassembling it. All right, so this is the bracket that came on the fan. And I'm going to end up uh, probably just cutting off these three tabs and then cutting this piece off, just starting with the ring and then starting fresh. So on the CX500 radiator, what I'm going to do, I've already cut these plates out. Uh, these are very large, I have to trim them down quite a ways. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and weld to the edge there. And then I'll trim back and I'll probably weld in like a nut um, on each corner. And then from there, the fan will fit in. So there won't be like a drastic amount of cutting to do. Um, but I think that's probably going to be the best, the best method here. So that's what I'm going to go for. And I'm hoping, yeah, having like four nuts, like one there, 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 there. That should, that should keep this thing, keep this thing solid. And then uh, another another fun fact, I was looking at how this fan fits in comparison to the GL650 housing. So if you check this out, they're both three bolt. They both have the same the same dimension there to there, but one of these is an odd spot. That or on the GL, it's in an odd spot. Check this out. If you really wanted to, you could damn near have this as a bolt-on. We've got two bolt holes lined up here. So what, you just mess with the third? That's not that big of a deal. So this could almost be a direct bolt-on fan if you ask me. That way you'd be utilizing the factory shroud. And uh, yeah, so keep that in mind. Okay, I'm getting my pieces trimmed out here, slowly but surely. I have the mounting ring for the fan uh, detabbed, and it's smoothed out. There's no paint on that, so now I can work on joining this to this. The next step will be to, this is where I'm going to place the fan, by the way. The next step uh, is going to be to clearance these plates uh, in that approximate spot, and then the fan will sink in past that, and then it should bolt into a location about there and there. So. Um, these plates are just roughed, so now I can work on, like I said, getting these mounted to there. And I'm toying with the toying with what to do there. If I just want to do like um, just a simple tab bent over with like a nut on the back side of there or something, I don't know. But we'll figure that out. I think the first order of business though from here is still to trim this out. So that's what we'll do next. Man, so I'm racking my brain on this fan situation because, I don't know, I, I, I went to sleep last night and I just was thinking about how I was going to attack this project. And I know I have these plates cut out, but I'm not so sold on the idea of them right now because what if this radiator ended up uh, failing down the road for some reason? Well, then I have to completely remake these plates, re-weld everything, repaint an entire radiator, um, 
and it's just there's a lot of uncertainty there. So what I'm thinking is something that's a little bit less invasive on the radiator itself. So I might kind of go the route like I did with the ignition switch or uh, some of the linkages and use some round bar. And I'm thinking maybe I'll just use like an M5 or an M6 uh, bolt, four of those on the corners here with maybe like a, uh, a standoff or, or a, a, a tapped piece of round bar right here. Just four little tab or four, four of them, you know, and that would keep everything situated. And then all I got to do is just bend up some more bar. So just one up from there, over, one up from there, over, you know. It's like the same amount of pieces. Obviously, I've already done the work on this, so it kind of sucks, but I don't know. Let's, you know, if, if you're going down the road, let's say, you know, two years from now, for some reason, the radiator fails, whatever, then that's something I can just transfer the holes on into the new one and bolt the fan on kind of thinking that might be a better option and, and then also I mean not a huge concern right now but having that plate on there that does block potentially block a little bit of airflow on the outer ends uh, of the core itself so just I don't know just some just some concerns here I, I think I'm gonna change my path though but you know I, I'm okay with showing this kind of stuff because you know this is like it's not an exact science there's always changes it's always evolving and sometimes you can you know you're set on an idea um, and you think it's great but then I don't know you your mind goes elsewhere and you just you come up with a better plan so I think I think this is gonna be a better solution a cleaner solution um, it'd be plenty strong I'm just uh, yeah we're gonna switch directions. I'm gonna start making these, so I probably won't show as much of that because you've seen me do plenty of that. Anyway, I'm gonna start making that now. We'll see how it works out. All right, we're making progress here. What I didn't show was making these uh, just little bungs here that are just tapped. So cut a piece off, drill it, tap it, you know, whatever. Anyway, all I've done to the radiator, I've just drilled four holes, as you can see, and I have those pieces mounted. Now what I'm gonna do is use some quarter round, and I'm gonna go ahead and um, figure out, I'm probably gonna do two separate pieces here, uh, either connecting from this one, looping up and looping back, or looping over, one of the two but two separate pieces there so it'll have four contact points and then that'll give me some more surface to weld to over here i'm going to space the radiator up uh eighth inch just using some pieces of aluminum to space it off the radiator and we'll go from there so i'm gonna have to do probably like a pretty pretty steep bend i don't want to do like a like a 90 or something like that so hopefully i can get all of this and uh, as, as few mistakes as possible on the cuts but we're gonna go ahead and go for that now. I'm gonna start bending. All right, I got the hanger system kind of uh, thought out here. Step one, take a hanger, chop it up. Here you go. Made a jig or a little bend template here. And I've got the first part done, but this sits spanned across there, touches on both sides. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate the other side. For this, you need a vise, a little bit of ingenuity. We'll do the initial down bend here. And this isn't getting it exact. I have to, you know, you finesse the bend when you get it right there, finesse the ends of it. This gets me real close. Got my finger in there. Take a wrench. Let me make this so you can see it a little bit better. Take a wrench. I just put one end over it like that, and that's my that's my leverage to bend it. And I'm using the old icrometer on this.
bent it just down to that angle. Now we got to take it out of the vise, flip it, do the same thing. There it is. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to length. And then we'll start getting the rest of the fit done here. Put a little bit more bend on one side. Now we're going to start smoothing out this side to fit flat or flush on the uh, on the little bungs I made there. I want to bend this side down a little bit because this side uh, this side fits really nice. I'll take a little bit of material off the edge of this real quick. At this point, at this point, I want to remember which side is which. Got contact on all six points at the same time. I'm afraid to touch it. All right, now we gotta tack it all up. Sweet. Okay.
Go ahead and disassemble this, pull the fan off so the motor's out of the bracket. These are little neoprene washers I have in between here. So I'm gonna replace those with hard washers and then weld, weld as much of this solid as I can. All right, here it is. Pretty snazzy little bracket. Um, yeah, just a few, just a few little bits here, but it, it's strong. It'll hold that fan just fine. And then we're gonna go ahead and use a uh, Loctite within this part, but it'll be kind of well, like a little rubber bushing between here and the shroud. Um, but I'm gonna Loctite the threads or the screws actually into here. So instead of uh, instead of using a lock washer, just for aesthetics. But anyway. We're gonna go ahead and get this mounted up and see how it all fits. But I like the way the bracket turned out regardless. All right, so we have all our components done. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this and we'll go ahead and fit it on the bike. It's on the bike. We've got that eighth inch gap here. That should be plenty in case it was to like rock or something like that for some reason. So anyway, let's go ahead and get it on the bike. All right, just for fun here, we're gonna go ahead and wire up this fan. See how much air it draws in a super scientific way. Almost everywhere in the fan, it has really good suction.
All right, it fits like a glove. You can see down there at all. Grab a flashlight here. I've got about three quarters of an inch between the fan and the front of the tack drive. Now if this is a CX, obviously that sticks out further, but this is a GL engine, so it's got like a flush mount cat or a, like a, a stubby end to it. But no evidence from the sides except for the two little bolts. Yeah. Looks awesome.